Hi, I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome back to How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. I hope you enjoyed this one. This is another view of the bridge that I did earlier. A bridge on the Reservoir of the Wynn in Wales, which I got from fellow YouTuber, name of Rabbit Black. And he very kindly let me uh, use some of his material, his photos. And I thought we'd do a scene looking back the other way because it has different trees in it and it's a slightly different view. And I thought we would just push the colour of it into the bluey greys rather than uh, offer lots of green. So, you can see I've stretched my paper, I'll put it on it there, that's what that is. And leaving a, a very thin film, we're going to drop some maple yellow in my arm, but uh, I just want to scrub this in slightly. It's here, and I'm bringing it into the trees around the land, and I just want to dry <clears throat> the top of that bridge off because I want to keep that dry because I, I want to have a, a clean edge on that. There we go, so drop this in. I'm going to bring it into the bridge, just come into the land here at the back. And whilst I've got that like that, we will just put a stroke or two of the alizarin crimson in. Bring it together, just bring it together. You can even bring some into the land, it doesn't uh, matter. And then at the top, <clears throat> I'll have some cobalt blue water to that bring it into the trees bring some down here as well put some crimson in it's in the sky up in April's yellow as well and it doesn't matter if it turns green it'd be an earthy green because we will be strengthening this up at a later stage but I just want to put some colour in paper's laying flat at the moment Gently bring the colours together and we'll be adding some clouds as well. But we just have to leave this at the moment um, just, to, just to settle a bit. A bit more in this top corner I think. Bring some paper gel at the bottom here as well. And then to bring a little bit of sparkle into this I'm just going to put some cadmium. Yellow pink. In certain areas and not everywhere. Definitely some in the back along here. Bringing it into the trees. And I'm just taking a line out there because I want this to creep down. And I want to add just a little bit of mist along the bottom there. Okay. I think that's enough. And taking a large brush. Just remove any excess paint from around the edges. Tuck it underneath the paper. And now we need the shine just to start to disappear off the paper. Then we'll run a few clouds in. Okay, I think you can see that the shine has just started to disappear off the paper. And we're just going to test it with this colour for the clouds. This is a mixture of cobalt blue, burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. And the reason why I put the burnt sienna in because it is a red anyway but I just want to take the uh, the glare out of it just to stand it off a bit from the violet that it makes it's still a, a, a violet colour okay that yeah, looks okay I'm just going to make some interesting sort of shapes still got the board laying flat with the blue containing two reds when it hits the yellow, it shouldn't turn green. Just helps to make your skies a little more interesting. Just strengthen them up only in areas just to give them just a little bit more interest. Clouds are usually darker along the bottom. Depends where they're lit from and the, how much rain or volume that they're carrying. I think whilst it's at that stage, we'll just give this a try. Cobalt blue and burnt sienna. This is quite thick. I'm just going to test it just to see how far it's going to spread. Okay, I 
think, I think we'll be okay with this. And we're going to put these background trees in with it. Down to the bushes. I try not to be tempted to fiddle too much. Soften, even though it, it is soft, it will dry softer. I am just softening the edges. And I'm going to take a little of the same paint colour. I might just add a tiny bit of water to that, just to be brush really. We shall drop these fir trees in. I also want to drop some of the cloud colour into that, just to add the variation. It's in the sky. Just a hint of a, a tiny bit of detail goes a long way to fooling your eye. Taking the same cloud colour, you can add this also to some of your trees here at the back. Also taking some of the same cloud colour, we can add some bushes here for some interest, just along this bottom line. I'm going to take some of the cobalt blue and add that to it, just to help it recede a little bit. Just put this fir tree in here as well. Just a little bit of detail. It will soften and mist. I'm going to leave it till the paper is still damp, but it'll be drier than it is at this moment. Okay, it's been about maybe five minutes and it's, I think it's dried off enough. So I've just wet. This is a flat brush. I'm going to wet it and I've just taken all the, all the moisture out of it. And we're going to put, hopefully, some tree trunks. In, but I want these to be light over dark. Trying not to overdo it. And now we're going to leave this to dry, then I'm going to clip it. Okay, your painting's all nice and dry, your background is. We're going to put these bushes in here. So I'm just going to re-wet the bushes, but I'm not uh, wetting them right to the edge. I'm just wetting the centre with just some clean water. And I've made a green grey up here. This is cobalt blue, a burnt sienna, with some glycerin crimson and a hint of cadmium yellow deep, just to make a grey green. And we're just going to test this to see. Because as we come forward slightly, I, I do want... Um, to add some greens in. And where the paper is dry, you can arrange some leaves to come forward. It's allowing this to pale off as it goes into the distance. <clears throat> this is the same colour, but it's a lot darker. It's a very, very deep green. It just has more blue added to it and more burnt sienna. I'm going to check that, it should be darker. I'm going to add this in on the shadow side here. Rewet the bridge. And with some of your grey, we can start to add some colours in. Just drop colour in. And some alizarin crimson in there as well. It's in the sky and I don't mind it mixing with the blue and giving you a violet shade. Encouraging it to mix little of your cloud colour. Just taking a damp brush and just working this in and work it around the stonework. Paling this off into the land. Same on this side. And I also want to drop into that some cadmium yellow deep. 
some of the nice dark green, the darker one of the uh, two. Then taking a damp brush, the paint you put on, I'm going to lift a little, little bit out. Just give it some variation. And what I also want to do is just catch the bottom with some water on the brush. Just pull the bottoms of these bushes out into the ground. And you see how it takes that hard edge away and allows the paint to drift down. And I'm also leaving some of the light patches in between a little bit of broken ground and interest and now we're going to leave that to dry now that your bridge is dry we can put the uh, shadow in this is Prussian blue and sepia just darken up this edge here because as the light filters through this way this side will be lighter than this side and I'm just going to rough up the edges, same on this side, lifting this edge out a little bit, just to allow that variation. Then with some clean water again, we'll just wet the sides all the way down to the water, and into that, <clears throat> some Naples yellow once again, just strengthening it up really. Cut yellow deep, just a little, just a little bit, not, uh, not too much. Prussian blue and burnt sienna once again. Then with some of your darker grey green, and bring some of the edges out, just pull it back. some real flavour as well. I'm going to drop some of the cloud colour in. Pulling it back. Once again, just allowing all this to creep a little bit and uh, softening some of the edges off. And then with some of your dark mixture that you put under the bridge, a few just along the shoreline, pull things together, pull it out a little bit. Now I can put some stonework in, same colour. Once again, you don't have to put every um, nook and cranny in. <clears throat> and this is where you can actually just paint some round the, the light patches, and it really does help to make that stand out. side as it's kind of weighted on this side at the moment with all the uh, trees in it so I'm actually once again I'm adding something that actually isn't there that's just burnt sienna pull it into the ground where the paper is still wet grey green the lighter mixture darker mixture, put it underneath, some of your real dark, just to add some real shadows underneath it. I'm figuring it once again, just deciding how high it's going to be, I think that's about right there. Once again we'll put a backpack on, some hair, Dark 
taken his trousers off. A little bit of red showing through. <coughs> and now we have to leave this to dry. Okay, now everything's uh, dry. Um, what we're going to do is re-wet the water again. So we'll just re-wet the whole of the water area. <coughs> and it's just a repeat of your sky colours. Just uh, I'm dropping some Naples yellow first. Once again, some of the crimson. Some of the cobalt blue. Cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Also some of your cloud colour. Cobalt blue, alizarin crimson with a touch of burnt sienna in it just to uh, get down a bit. This is also the darker mixture of your two greens. Just building up the reflections uh, slowly. Into your dark, pushing blue and sepia. Just to bring some, some dark into the water just to give the water a little bit of depth. shadow under the bridge and we'll just very carefully mimic um, the bridge. You're giving an impression that the reflection is there. A little hint of crimson. Just right there some yellow. We're just putting the dark parts of the shadow in. So once again, I said I think we'll let that dry, and uh, then we'll, we can finish it off then. Okay, everything's dry now, and uh, I'm just coming to uh, put some movement in the water, and I'm just putting a couple of wind streaks in. I've already done um, most of them. You've, you've seen me do this before. I'll just show you the last one. We just create a little highlight on the water. That's just with a craft knife and I just want to take just a little bit of the green and we'll just put one or two little branches in on the tops of these. I think that'll do. This is where you get around to the best bit. This is where you get to sign it, mount it and frame it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click the like button and subscribe. Like I always say, subscribers are always welcome and it will cost you nothing. Once again, thank you to Rabbit Black, a YouTuber, who's allowed me to use some of his reference material. So once again, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I'll leave a link in the description box and if you click on that, it will take you to the other videos I've made. Thank you.